Hi guys, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. Today I have for you kind of a teach and play material about people power. Uh, people power is already, I believe, the 11th, yes, 11th uh, installment of the coin series, counter insurgency series. A series long time ago started by Fall Korunke with such titles like Undone Abyss, A Distant Plane, Cuba Libre, and so on. Uh, today what I would like to do is discuss with you guys the base game concepts, a little about the map, about the operations, special activities, probably play a couple of events to show how uh, the, the mechanics work here. They are pretty unique in some areas, pretty standard in other areas. So the main goal is to teach you and, and make you, uh, you know, interested in this game. Uh, in another video, the unboxing, I was showing a historical background, the components, all stuff like this. There's a link to this video uh, below. So, so feel free also to reach there. Okay, two words of introduction. So the people power, it's a game from one to three uh, players. <clears throat> By the way, the uh, solo option uses the cards. So I would say a new standard in the coin games. I am uh, really glad that this is uh, for the free players coin. There are not so many like this. And that in this case, it, it really, really, really uh, makes it uh, unique. Uh, the historical background, uh, it's about the revolution insurgents and counterinsurgents in Philippines between 1981 and 1986. So pretty, pretty, you know, a recent event. Uh, we would have three factions, which I will be describing in a moment, but enough to say it will be government, Marcus government, the blue faction. It will be the uh, insurgent New People's Army, NPA, red faction, and it will be a non-violent reformers faction, which is a yellow, and uh, let's say, part of, of the game. And there is a lot of material, uh, historical material for the game, so uh, the designers and developers have a lot of, you know, sources to, to, to build this game. So let us have a look at the map first. <clears throat> this is treated as kind of introductory coin, and you will be able to see this also on the map, although it introduces some interesting twists. So we know the factions, now let's have a look at the, at the map. Uh, what we can see, first of all, uh, here are the Philippines, and as you can see, there are actually two types of uh, areas. So the countryside, like here, and also the cities. There are like four cities, Manila, Cebu, uh, Davao, and Zamboanga. So four of them. The numbers here, as always in coin, show the population 5, 2, 2, 2. So as you might probably uh, suspect, uh, Manila would be one of the key. Those white lines show the division between the areas. There have to be some division of the areas. Uh, and also it, it shows the adjacency. For example, Manila is adjacent to the northern Luzon, to southern Luzon, and that's all. Uh, South China Sea is not playable, no uh, Sulu Sea also. So, there is no adjacency between Manila and uh, Visayas. This is, this is for this sole purpose. Uh, this game has also the standard control and support <coughs> uh, areas here on the map. Although for support, I will tell you a little in a moment because that would be pretty unique. Here we have a track on which we would have resources. The resources will be with those cylinders. And there will be also the victory points uh, for all factions marked here. And as always, a really nice mark 
on this uh, on this track where the victory is being achieved. Here we would have election card, which will be giving the tempo for each turn. Each turn actually uh, tells you about uh, the, the time between elections. Uh, we have two scenarios. We have an uh, extended scenario with three turns and three elections. And we have standard scenario, which you can see now here, uh, which is consisting of two turns and two, two elections. Mm, and, and, and I will be showing you in a moment how, how it's being done. Now, as for the forces, the government is blue. As you might expect, the uh, light blue is police, the dark blue are the troops. Then we have the uh, insurgents, the, uh, the, the red faction, the NPA, and they have bases, for example, here, and have guerrillas, hexagonal, which can be active and inactive. And we have also reformers, they have base in Manila, and yeah, they have rounded cylinders, active, inactive. There is a protest here which makes yeah, the protesters active in this area. Uh, and what else about the map? Uh, you know, now we should probably focus also on the sequence of play. Uh, here we would have a sequence of play, which is pretty unique. We'll discuss in a moment. And also each election round. Now, uh, so this, this was the general introduction to the map. I would like now to draw attention to couple of specifics of this game, which really uh, differentiated from the other games. I will talk now about the support. I will talk now about how do we calculate the control. And I will talk also about the sequence of play. So first of all, uh, this is a game, I believe the first game in the series, which actually does not have something like support, neutral, oppose or actively support, uh, passively support, neutral, uh, passively oppose, actively oppose. No, each faction here has its own, uh, uh, let's say, uh, support marker. So government has support and the supporters of government were showing this sign. The opposition has oppose and they had this sign. And the uh, insurgents has a resist, so that sign. All three of them can 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 be in a particular place. Of course, one of them can be in a particular area, but they will be trying to drag it into their direction. So the rule book shows it pretty nicely. We have neutral. It can be changed to any of those, but if there is opposition in a particular place to, to become support, you need to change with, from opposition to neutral and from neutral to support. So a little twist to the game. Second twist to the game is about the control. For the control purposes, you calculate all the pieces of government, all the pieces of the NPA, so all the blue pieces, all the red pieces, as for the yellow, you calculate the protesters only if they are active and their bases. So, for example, this is a good example, Visayas. You have two tokens here. You have protester and you have guerrilla. In normal coin game, would say, oh, no control here. No, wrong. This, uh, Q, this, 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 this piece is not counted against control as long as it is not active. So those three guys are counted uh, for control. And if this guy was active, he would also be counted for control, but, but not otherwise. This is a really cool mechanic. Now, when those guys will be active? Only when they are at the place with protest. Yeah. Protest is something which makes the reformers active because they are protesting. So if the protest will disappear from here, there will be, they will be all non active. If we get the protest here, this cube will be active. So this is a second interesting twist to the game. And the third twist, probably the largest one, is the sequence of play. Sequence of play is slightly different than the, with other coins. You know, you cannot have the same approach to four-player coin, and you cannot have the same approach as you had in the 
two-player coin, like uh, the British way, about which you can also uh, read and, and see materials on my blog. In this case, some of the things will be familiar. So let's have a look. The faction can do either, if we have a first faction, operation and special activity. But the second faction can do the event and full operation. Not a limited operation, but full operation. This is a change from the four people, yeah, let's say, coins. So operation and special activity. And then second eligible faction, operation only or event. Second option is first faction can do operation only or event. So again, full operation or event. And the second faction can do operation and special activity. So this is this is important thing to note. There are those two choices. There is a third choice. You can do the limited operations of so operation in one space, but you will stay eligible. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And that's something uh, which oftentimes makes even free, uh, free of, uh, of uh, um, uh, factions uh, uh, executing during the turn. It's possible. It doesn't have only to be two because you would have one which will be doing, f for example, this, second which will be doing this, and third will be doing this. Of course, there is a fourth option, always a pass, which gives resources uh, to, 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 to the particular faction. The mm, insurgents get one and uh, the government gets three. And of course, they stay eligible. So these are exactly those tiny specifics, probably more of them, which you can see in, in this game, which makes it really, really interesting. So, yep, uh, let me now continue. Uh, one thing which I just spotted, which I have not put on the map, is eight. So the way government is getting the resources, we should put it at 10, so they get some money. Okay, now uh, we should probably now deep dive into the particular factions and their operations, uh, we should start most probably from the victory condition so we can understand what kind of dynamics we have here. Uh, by the way, I really like how the player aids are done. Beautiful, colorful, with all the informations. I'm not so fond of the player mates. I would like to them be much thicker and more beautiful, like for example in the Falling Sky updated version. Map is fine. Uh, I think it's it's readable. It's just just what you would need from this. So for the victory conditions, they are as always on the player eight. And let's look at the government. Government will have government control plus patronage more than 18. So from 19 to the top. Control is pretty obvious when they have a more um, troops and police and bases than another faction calculating the reformers only if active, they control particular space. Of course, five points at Manila, which is, which is pretty important because the control means control of population. Second thing is patronage. Something here, number five at this point in time, which is kind of them pumping the money into the particular areas of the society, like into the military, in some groups of interests. So siphoning the public funds for gaining the support. So this is the second source. At the beginning of, the, of this scenario, we have five, which is pretty decent number. And if you add to this the 13 for control, because we have control to here, five here, to here, to here, and to here, they are pretty close to the final victory. So uh, it will be, I would say, pretty obvious that uh, the opposition has to cooperate against government and not, not to fight each other. Uh, there is definitely uh, no worse approach than both factions fighting each other when the government is, uh, how much? One point? One point uh, from, from, from the victory. So uh, that would be it uh, now. Mm, for the second faction, so the reformers will have reformer bases plus opposition. So the base is this one here, and that's all what they have now. They would need to put much more opposition and win hearts and minds. 
of the people in order to win. Uh, their threshold is the lowest, it's, it's, which is 13, but it's not not very easy to get. Of course, Manila is a huge sweep. It's like five eight out of 13 points. So potentially uh, that will uh, that can change a lot, and for the good of of uh, of, of, of the reformers, uh, it's not easy uh, to play with them. I can guarantee that to you. The NPA basis plus resistance. So uh, you see the base here, here, and resistance. So that uh, probably the easiest would be to get in Visayas and Southern Zone when they have a control and no government forces. There. They start with a free because they have free base. So in essence, the reformer and NPA uh, victory conditions are pretty similar. And the government, yeah, it's a control and patronage. Um, it's a free player game, so definitely you had to, 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 to uh, find some victory conditions. They are not contradictory or kind of a zero sum game. Uh, we saw a lot of games, four player coin games, for, where, for example, the control dimension. Uh, was, I don't know, uh, the, for the control dimensions, two factions were fighting, and for the support, hearts, and mice dimension, another two factions. Uh, good example is Fire in the Lake, yeah, government versus communistic, yeah, um, uh, uprising, as well as Viet Cong versus Arvin forces, yeah. So, uh, this is not uh, like this here. Uh, here we have much more focus on um, different uh, uh, victory conditions. Okay, guys, now time to review each and every of the factions. Let's start with the main faction, which is government. What you will see in the government, uh, to some extent, pretty standard, uh, the, um, pretty standard operations and special abilities with some twists. I will not be going through each and every detail, that you can do when you'll be playing, but I would like to give you a feeling of this. First of all, we have train. Train plays government forces and increases support. So this is one of the most common uh, operations in the coin, where you can put uh, actually in any citizens countryside uh, with government or bases up to four cubes, up to four cubes. So this is both police and troops, and then you can do the civic action. And the civic action uh, allows you to, to increase, uh, to turn uh, the hearts and minds towards the support to govern. One interesting thing is, which you have in this, uh, in this uh, train, is that at each selected city or government base place up to four cubes, fine. But then in one selected space with government control, replace three cubes with the base. So you can place them first and then replace. This is a train. Sweep. Sweep will allow you to move the forces and to discover the rebels. Yeah. So this works against the guerrillas, so the red faction. You move the cubes um, to spaces without protestant strike. That's important. Um, as desired in each destination space, activate one guerrilla per two troops or per two cubes in the city. So the usual move and sweep. You can also sweep in place. This is important. You can sweep in place and discover the NPA guerrillas. The roundup is what government does against the uh, reformers. Well, so these are the spaces with police and active reformers. So usually the spaces like here where you have protest and what they will do, will, they will remove active reformer pieces up to the number of police in the space. And when they remove protest, uh, when they remove the last protester, they also remove the protest. And they will, of course, lose the aid because US government is not very liking that they are actually treating roughly the, the protesters. So increasing the forces, discovering the guerrillas, getting rid of reformers, and this, getting rid of guerrillas. So attack versus NPA forces assault. 
For the special abilities, we have Enrich, very important for the victory because it's obtaining patronage. It's not easy to do this because you need a space with government control and support, and it can't be Manila, but there is a one space at the beginning of the game, which is a pretty decent one, Cebu. Cebu. And what it does, it adds twice the selected space population to patronage, but this then sets the space to neutral. So in this scenario, one of the tricks is that in the first movement, in the first move, the government can potentially get in for patronage here. Then we have a reprisal, so they eliminate opposition or resistance, and they can end protests or strikes and relocate enemies. So in places where they control, they can set the space to neutral, so remove any, uh, resist any oppose, but what is more, I can remove any protests or strikes there. Of course, the activists will be flipped to inactive if there is no protest. And they can place the terror. Terror, uh, you cannot change the alignment, for example, from neutral to another before you remove the terror. And this is, I believe, the usual coin mechanic from the past also. And the last is charm. That's a nice one. Uh, we shift space to support and gain eight. So what we do, we are gaining hearts and minds of our uh, of uh, our people in Philippines and also of the U.S. government. Again, we need a control, we, uh, but we spend the patronage. So we give the fraud money which we siphon back to the people, and we show to the U.S. Look, guys. We are doing the good things, and then we are getting one towards support and eight plus three. Pretty, I would say, regular operations, and uh, yeah, it plays pretty straightforward with uh, with the government. By the way, one thing which I notice is that usually when you start with a government, you have a lot of troops and police to rally. In this game, you already have a lot of them on the map. Let's have a look now at the reformers. What are their special abilities? And remember, this is a non-violent fact. Recruit, this is what you would uh, probably first expect. So augment or recover friendly forces in spaces without support. In each space, they place one activist or replace two with a base. Or if they have a base, they place up to the population play base. Pretty standard coin mechanic. Assemble allows them to move, remove terror and protests. And we can move any activity into selected spaces from an adjacent space. They can remove, remove terror and they can also end protests. Sometimes it's worthwhile to end the protest because the roundup cannot be played against inactive protesters. They can do the persuade. This is one of a few possibilities to actually fight between insurgent forces. They remove NPA guerrilla and convert strikes to protests. And of course, one of the key and basic uh, things they do, they protest. So they need to neutralize support or resistance and generate opposition. So this is any spaces with activists and no strike or terror. Uh, and what they do in each selected space, they place available protests. There are four. There can't be more. Uh, if none, uh, if uh, okay, then if protest in that space, shift space one level towards opposition. With the protest, the interesting thing is there are four of them. One is there, but they are two-sided. These are the strikes which are led by the guerrillas, and these are the protests. So. This is also kind of a um, conflict mechanism between those two factions. So just to sum up, this is how they build the forces. This is how they move. This is how they convert guerrillas to reformers. And this is how they protest and remove support. Now, they have a couple of special abilities. They have appeal in order to gain resources. This, this is based on what was actually happening with a lot of reformers who were traveling around the world to gain the resources. But traveling around the world means they were not in Philippines. So you need to remove a reformer, but you are getting two resources for this. 
convert, this is very cool, because you replace government pieces <coughs> sorry, with reformer pieces and lower patronage. Very cool to hit the patronage. And you can convert, first of all, police, then troops, but then even base. And each and every such conversion is minus one, or in case of base, minus two to patronage. Canvas, this allows simply to set the space to opposition with activists and terror, set space to opposition and to remove any terror. Set space to opposition. You don't move one towards opposition, you set to opposition immediately. Actually, uh, this election, which we have here, the momentum is protest set spaces to opposition instead of shifting. So both in the first uh, turn protest and canvas will be uh, hugely helping reformers to set the spaces to, to, to opposition. And the last faction is NPA. And if you look at NPA, it's like the regular insurgent faction of any coin game. They have rally. So they place guerrillas or replace them with base or they can move, uh, move them underground. They have much. They can move guerrillas from selected spaces into any adjacent spaces. And of course, they can get active if there is too many of them. Uh, by the way, uh, Visayas and Cebu, you can only move one uh, because of, uh, of uh, difficulties of transport. You have, of course, attack. And this is uh, also the attack which eliminates government forces. You do not attack reformers. And in this case, you roll a die. If you roll less than the number of your uh, guerrillas, you uh, remove two, two, two troops or police. Terror, something which helps to build resistance and intimidate protesters. And what does it do in each space? You activate one underground guerrilla. You remove protest or strike marker, if any, and place terror you shift one towards resistance. And remember, resistance is one of the key factors for uh, victory of NPA. Now, as for the special abilities, extort, pretty known, you need to get the, the, the resources somehow. And also ambush is a pretty, pretty known because it automatically uh, causes attack to succeed. Strike is something new. You play strikes and infiltrate protests. It's yeah, an city with an underground NPA guerrilla and without terror. And what's the procedure? In each space, you activate, of course, one guerrilla, and if decide to remove one activist, so you can get rid of, of reformers. You place a strike if there is none there, or if protests, you flip it to strike. And then, of course, activist went, uh, goes to inactive. Then, if strike, in that space, shift one level towards resistance. Again, this is how they can get the victory points. So as you can see, all three factions are pretty distinctive. They have distinct position on the map, distinct victory conditions, distinct uh, operation and special activities, which makes for a pretty cool asymmetric game. I know because I already played and, and, and really have a lot of fun with this. Okay, guys, I believe it's time to play at, the, at least a couple of rounds to show you how it goes. In order to play them, we need to create the, the, the action deck. We need 10 cards, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 per turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And uh, yeah, we have elections. 86 is the final, 84 is uh, in the middle. What you do, you take the four, the last four, and you shuffle it here. And then you put it under. So this is the first. And then you do the similar thing. Here you take four, you shuffle, it's put beneath, and that way you have a deck prepared. So bear with me, we'll start 
in a moment. Okay, guys, time to play it. So what I will be doing, I will be flipping the event and then I will be playing to the best possible way with each faction. So, so kind of a solo game. Let us have a look what we have first. As you can see, the graphics for the events are slightly different. Here we have the uh, sequence. So the reformers and PA and then the government. Radio Veritas, Catholic propaganda taken off air. Remove a reformer base from Manila and an adjacent space. Powerful event. Broadcasting the revolution place an activist, a reformer base and a protest marker in any one space. Flip strike and remove terror if any. That's hmm. That's really interesting event for the, for the reformers. Mm, especially if they put it here and actually take 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 mm, the control from government so they cannot do the patronage. On the other hand, if we do, uh, for example, protests here, here and convert, it will be pretty powerful for the reformers, but they will remove a reformer base from the Manila and adjacent space, which is, uh, which is a pity. Mm, okay. I believe we need to fight with the government, so it will be, we will be doing first faction operation plus special activity. The operation will be protest. So we will do a neutralize support or resistance and generate opposition. We will use this special uh, activity uh, uh, momentum. So we'll do protest here. The protest is already here. So the only thing which we do is we remove the support and we add opposition, which immediately drowns this down to 13 and this up to six. This will be the protest here. And then we do the protest here, which gives us also the possibility to turn this support to really to our side. The next thing is uh, update here by two and by two. And now I believe some convert could help us. Yeah, it's possible. Replace government pieces with reformer pieces and lower patronage. Any space with active activists and government pieces in each space, remove two cubes or replace one police, then troops with one activist. So what I will do, I will remove two police here so they cannot round us up. And I will mm, uh, convert here. This conversion also removes the control of the government, as you can see. We have two to two, mm, and here yeah, they have still the control. Interestingly, uh, okay, minus one patronage per selected space. So uh, here and here they lose the patronage, so they lose another two victory points. It was a pretty hard hit by reformers against of, uh, mm, against the government, but the government most probably would like to uh, remove a reformer base from the manual and not just this. It's only removing one. I believe they want to stay eligible. They will do the limited operation. They will augment the forces. So what they will take, we will do the train. Place government for, uh, by the way, have we paid? Have we paid? We have not paid for a protest. We have not paid for a protest. These are usually free. Here you need to pay. So the government will do the train uh, to resource the protected space, place government forces and increase support, any citizen countryside spaces with government control or government base. So I believe we'll do this in two spaces and we can put four cubes and we can do the base. First of all, we'll add four police here. Sorry, needs to do it, need to get rid of, of those guys. Now, I cannot train there. Uh, I can, I can, sorry, I can because I have a base. 
with government component based. So what I will do, I will put one here and three of those. Ensemble. So uh, government is regaining the control and two victory points. Uh, sorry guys, I can do it in only one space. This is Limop. Limop, limited operation. Of course, good you remind me. So now two victory points. I prefer to do it in Manila. And there is a possibility for the civic action. So in a space with troops, police and government control, each two resources removes one terror or once no terror shifts one level towards support. Uh, do we want to spend two? No. No, wait a wait. Now, the NPA can have an event. No, limited operations. And they would simply uh, rally. They need more troops. They need more troops, and especially because they can wreck the control from the government. So if we rally here, we'll get two for population and one for base. So three units. Getting three units, we have in total five. And that will be problem for government because they lose control and the NPA is gaining. So NPA has now five points. Government has seven points. And that way we went through the event. This goes to ineligible, this goes to eligible. I believe we can play a couple of more events. It's going really, really nicely. Let's see what we have here. Companion Chaos. So this is the first is NPA, the second is government. So Gallic campaign decimates cards. Place three NP guerrillas from the map on this card. They return to available at the rest phase of the next election. Hmm. Or deep penetration against place four police from the map on this card. They return to available at the rest phase of the next election. By the way, I will notice we have not paid, of course, for the rally. Oh, that's good. Are the police really problematic to NPA? That's a good question. Mm. That's a good question. They are not so problematic, I would say, although taking them from here Okay, it takes control from here also. And we of course can have an operation like terror plus extort, which would be pretty cool to gain gain some some bonuses. But then it will be the government who will play this event. So uh, I believe this is still still positive. So um, the NPA, what they will do, they will rally even more troops and they do the extort. So they will rally one troop here. So this is and one more here and one here. And this is two spaces. So this is uh, two resources, one, two. Now, they have one, two, three, four, so they have control here. So it goes up, it goes down, and they have now control here. So a dramatic shift of events. So it goes even two more. Don't worry, the government will strike back in a moment. And they will do with this rally extort because they need. They need resources, so they will activate uh, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I believe it's okay also to activate. Oh no, we'll lose possibility to do other actions. So this would be free resources, should be fine for now. Now the government can remove three guerrillas. So they do this, so they can do operation or event. Mm, would they want to do that? 
then mm, removing free guerrillas oh why not let's do it free guerrillas removing free guerrillas for example from here potentially will allow us to strike here and kill the base and this guerrilla so the control again flips and this goes to and this goes to that's interesting what will happen now because we have one eligible faction to our ineligible happens third event is government guerrilla and it's not a reformer san miguel corporation holding company siphons stolen funds government spent up to 10 resources for every two spent at one patronage wow exempt from access Exist. The government resources minus two for each reformer based on map. We don't like either of those. No, no, we don't. And we definitely don't need to do it. What we would like to do, we have opposition here. We probably uh, go for ops and special activity. And we would like to close the protests. Uh, because otherwise they will most probably remove round up our forces. Mm, so how can we do it? So, uh, okay, assemble, move activists, remove terror and protests. This is possible. This is not. Okay, set space to opposition, not. Okay, so the only is probably assemble. And assemble can be done with appeal, so gain resources. Or canvas, which is set space to opposition. Uh, but we don't have terror on the map. So if we do assemble, move activists, remove terror and protest, and spaces, we want to spare destination space. Mm, will be really low on, on funds, but that's what we have to do. So what we will do, we will do assemble into spaces here and here, we move in place. And then uh, as desired to remove terror from each destination with reformer pieces, then as desired to remove protest from anywhere on the map. So I believe this would be one protest. So no, we'll use only one resource and we'll remove this protest. Uh, yep, uh, we will flip those to active. And then what we will do with assemble, we do appeal, we remove one of those and gain two resources. That way. And that's end of the turn. That way we have much safer situation now here. Let us play a couple of more. But a nuclear power plant. Government enrich twice. And I believe enrich is a patronage. But do they have support anywhere? No, they don't. Minus six government resources. Hmm. I believe we'll go for the option special activity. We need to gain support. We need to have more forces. So uh, this create forces. This uh, sweeps the guerrillas. This rounds up. Mm, this eliminates insurgent forces and strikes. Uh, shift spaces to support and gain aid. This would be really, really good. Because using the charm and train, we can first have a civic action and then we can have uh, even one more shift in manual. So yeah, we'll do it. We'll do the train with government. We'll do the train. Although it's also tempting to, to attack here. Assault, yeah. I believe this assault would be really devastating uh, for them and but assault we can have with enrich and reprisal mm, element opposition 
Ok, Assault and Reprisal. Assault costing two resources will be here. And what happens? In each space, remove one active NPA piece per troop if countryside. So, those two. Remove strike if last NPA piece removed, plus 5, 8 per NPA base removed. The base is removed, so it goes down, but 8 jumps here. And this would be one assault. Do we want to assault somewhere else? We can potentially kill individual killers, but for two resources, that doesn't make sense. Enrich is obtained patronage, but only with the places with support. We don't have such place, but we have reprisal. Eliminate opposition or resistance and protest or strike. Relocate enemies. Any space of government control, for example, here, now yeah, believe. That's the only good space. Set selected space to neutral. Okay, five points from position. Then remove any protest or strikes there. Then place a terror there. So that will keep it stable. And uh, relocate one guerrilla or activist from there to any adjacent space. Let me relocate him here. We can do reprisal in one more space. Is there a suitable space? No, no, we don't want to do more. So that will be all. And I believe the NPA instead of just reducing the resources for the government, they will do uh, their turn with maybe with operation. Maybe it's time for terror. Maybe it's time for terror, build resistance and intimidate protests. Any spaces with underground guerrillas. One resource per selected space. And we can do extort to this, yes. And remove protest or strikes marker if any, and place terror marker if shift one towards resistance. So where do we fire with a terror? We'll for sure do terror in Davao because that gives us two points. And this is one resource. Another good spot. Do we have some good spots? Those will be pretty long term investments. One more point here. And one more point to another island. So here. These are two additional resources and two additional victory points. So 10. Now we need, uh, definitely we need some money. The money will come from here, one, and from here, two. That's all for them. Extort was done. We go here. Again, we have only one. Eligible faction. Let's see. Oh, Pope John Paul II visit. Government charm in two spaces, but do not reduce patronage. No, minus three eight for each protest marker on the map. We don't need to do this. Oh, what we need to do is probably to spread our influence. Now it's a time. Although in those two places, it's not the best. We have three resources, maybe some uh, recruit. Mm -hmm. Recruit with convert. I believe recruit with convert would be cool. Convert maximum to spaces. Recruit, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. What we shall do, we should recruit in Manila. This would be one resource. 
because uh, it allows in each space place one activist or replace two base or if reformer base place activist it will up to population plus bases. You understand that we can put six of them here now, which is crazy, but that's what we can do and keep our presence in Manila. And another recruit. <laughs> now we will uh, pause the recruit. We'll do the convert here. Okay, and we can do another convert only with active activists. So this is the only space. And when we come back to recruit, we'll do a base here, which will give additional victory point because now it's four, two bases, and so. That finishes the event. Okay, not not enough money for the uh, for the mm, reformers. How many cards have we played? One, two, three, four, five, six. So still definitely an event. Okay, government add government resources equal to population at support. Government remains eligible there is no population at support minus three patronage minus five government resources wow that could hurt mm, it's really hard to prevent the event okay what the government should do they need to fight for support that's definitely so we probably uh, need to do some of this charm, uh, but we don't have control. So first of all, we need more. We need more troops. So it will be train, train. And where do we train? We train here for two resources. We need to get rid of those guys. At least three troops comes here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this works with control, mm -hmm. and we will also, I believe, recruit here, which also wrecks control from them. After this train, we can do an reach or charm. And we still don't have support, which is a PT. We should also do one more recruit, I believe, here. Have we paid? I don't believe we paid for the second one. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, we should do the recruit very even though we lose some money. So one less here. That way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, should be still enough. Mm, let me give all space here. Let's do it that way. And now we can do an reach. No chance, but we can do the charm. Shift space to support and gain aid. Any spaces with government control. Okay. Spend one patronage, then shift the space one level towards support. And where we would like to move towards support. Here, that would be our space. We pay with patronage. Yes, I know. But we have eight plus three. Good. And then we can do the enrich here. And this enrich will be giving us double the patronage value. Okay, <laughs> next card. Wow, elections. So guys, we went through the half of a scenario. Let's do a quick roundup of election and we'll finish here, I believe. So, victory, strike, minus one patronage per strike on the mag, no strikes. Acts of desperation, we haven't played with it. Victory, check. If any faction has met its victory conditions, 
I don't believe they are 19 <coughs> minus minus 9 of those guys are minus 6 uh, those are minus 9 yep minus 8 minus 8 minus 9 and minus 9 <coughs> Government at resource equal to 8 plus government controlled population. So if the 8 is 18 and they control 5, 7, 9, 10, 12, 30, they add 30 resources. My goodness, that's huge. Reformers at resource equal to population at opposition. Uh, this is 2. And I believe that's all. Not much. NP at resources equal to twice NP bases on the map, which are two. So four resources for them. Then support civic action in spaces with government controlled troops and police. Every two resources spent removes one terror, protest or strike, or once no more terror, protest or strike present shift the space one level towards support so i will spend two resources here we'll go for a spending spree and we will use four resources here to get rid of this resist so two less points one two three four resources first but two less points here i believe we would like to get control, and not control, but support here too. Even two less resources. And it would be good to remove terror and get the support here. We had a lot of funds to do it. Agitation in spaces for NPA control. Every one resource spent removes one terror protest or once no more terror protest shifts the space uh, one level toward resistance. I don't believe they want to do anything here. Foundation reformers place one base in a space with no government control. No government control. A good space with no government control is here. Which is one victory point more. Redeploy first government may move any police to government controlled spaces, then the government must move troops to Manila, cities with government control or spaces with government bases. There's a base here, there's a base here, there's a base here. So first those guys have to be moved, for example here, and that immediately gives control to NPA and one point. To them. Personalities and aspirations. Okay, now all factions will be eligible. We'll flip all the mm, active guerrillas and uh, remove the strikes, remove the protests, and we'll put election card here. And of course, those three guys here. I believe we will pause here. So that was a teach and play for the people power. Uh, in this material, what I wanted to achieve is to show you guys how to play this game. What are the rules? What are the specifics of, of, of this game? Also, in an actual, uh, uh, actual way, way of, of, of playing, uh, present to you uh, the, 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 the couple of turns. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for being with me here today. Kindly please give thumbs up to this video and subscribe if you find it interesting. Feel free to use the comment section for any of your opinions. That's all for today. Thank you. Bye.